Hi everyone and thank you for viewing my video on how to pick a Kentucky Derby winner. I'd like to start this presentation with this interesting quote I found on the internet by Chuck Palahniuk which states, there are only patterns, patterns on top of patterns, patterns that affect other patterns, patterns hidden by patterns, patterns within patterns. If you watch close, history does nothing but repeat itself. What we call chaos is just patterns we haven't recognized, what we call random is just patterns we can't decipher. What we can't understand, we call nonsense. What we can't read, we call gibberish. There is no free will, there are no variables. I find this quote very interesting because my RPXL system in predicting uh, thoroughbred winners uh, does exactly that. It looks at uh, patterns uh, historically and sees if there are any common factors which can point to eventual winners of uh, upcoming races. For all of us who love the sport of kings and have handicapped or red racing, know very well what a daunting task it can be to pick a winner, and the reasons for this are multifactorial. We have myriads of variables, an exorbitant amount of data, and to make sense of it all is simply very difficult. Uh, some of the variables are distance, track, surface, class, trainers, jockeys, weather, weight, layoffs, post position, workouts, horses, body language, you name it, uh, it's there. We all also know that uh, there are many approaches to handicapping a race. Uh, we all know that at a certain time any one of these approaches can and is successful. Uh, how many times have we uh, been generals uh, after the fact and said, I should have had that winner? Uh, there is speed handicapping where Buyer speed figures are used most frequently, pace handicapping, I'm sure you've heard of the pace makes the race phrase, there's form handicapping, class handicapping, trainers and jockeys, watching the tote boards, trip handicapping where you uh, view previous races and see if the horse encountered any trouble, and then there's breeding and bloodlines, and I'd like to mention one more which I've termed the John White method. Personally, I do not know John White, but he is one of the horsemen that I respect more than any other uh, in the business of horse racing. He is the morning line maker at Santa Anita and Del Mar, as well as an HRTV and Santa Anita simulcast host. He also writes for Express Bet and is frequently a guest of uh, Steve Bick's uh, at the races. Steve Bick is a uh, phenomenal handicapper as well and has uh, a great show on Sirius uh, Radio. If you have not heard of it, uh, I encourage that you try to find it and listen to it. Very, very good guys, these two. John uh, has an interesting approach to picking the winners. He has a total of nine factors which he deems important and they are, as you can see here, the graded stakes factor, the win and graded stakes factor, the eight pole factor, the gameness factor, the distance foundation factor, sufficient racing experience factor, the no adding blinkers as a three-year-old factor, raced as a two-year-old factor, and not a gelding factor. If a particular horse does not qualify on any one of these factors, uh, they get what John calls strikes. Uh, the more strikes, the less likely that the horse will win a race. Uh, I love the approach. Uh, it's been pretty successful, and I can't wait to see the 2012 version of this. And finally, now I'll get to the RPXL system, my baby. Uh, for over 20 years now, I've been looking for a way to successfully predict outcomes. I realized a long time ago that I'm not capable of determining which factors and approaches is optimal as they may change from race to race. I also realized that different factors must be more predictive than others for each particular type of race. Therefore, I concluded there is no panacea system. So my assumptions and my love for mathematics led me to develop a system that I can honestly say makes me pretty proud. So what is my system composed of? Well, the system comprises very accurate data, large databases, which I feel are needed to analyze type-specific races. I use over 100 potential factors to be analyzed and weighted for each type of race. 
uh, always software is one of my favorites and it's how I started handicapping uh, thoroughbreds I use Microsoft Excel I use at risk Silvolver for genetic algorithm analysis I use the stat Statistica for data analysis and data mining as well as neural network analysis I use NeuroDimensions uh, which uses uh, neural network analysis by utilizing the levenberg markhardt alg algorithm and i also use frontline's risk solver platform for monte carlo simulations so as you see my method is purely statistical purely mathematical deals with only numbers uh, i'm not knowledgeable in any of the other um, factors or the ways that uh, you may handicap a race Obviously, it's got its advantages and disadvantages. I'd like to take a couple of minutes to show you exactly how I do this. This is a always software, and it deals with profiles. And let's, for a second, uh, create a profile. You see, there are a total of 87 factors here, which you can use in putting together a profile to handicap a race. So let's create a profile. Let's assume that uh, distance switch is important. Let's assume back class is important. Let's assume uh, the whole speed was important. Uh, let's assume as far as late pace, we'll use this factor. And once we pick the factors that we want to use in handicapping a uh, race, uh, we can use the default values for that particular track and the number of values that are done. We're done with the profile. It's a Churchill Downs and let's name it Nyo. And we'll save it. If we go back to analysis and we do a database run and let's uh, say we want to put the results that we get on screen so as you see here these are I have 12 Kentucky Derby races uh, run and let's see how well the new profile that we just made will perform so we'll put it uh, as a dirt routes and we'll put it here for off routes and we'll go nine dirt routes nine off routes you see our win percentage would have been 33 percent by using those factors average win neutral would have been twelve dollars and thirty thirteen cents and our return on investment would have been 102 percent we would have lost all off routes i used always exclusively for the first four or five years but found it to be extremely limiting and i've opted uh, for another option what i do now is i have a large database and i simply can export that large database into microsoft excel this is the data that i've imported into microsoft excel you can see i have over a hundred factors with values for the past 13 Kentucky Derbies. Now, some of you might say 13 races is not enough to make any decisions, but it's not really just 13 races. It's 13 races with approximately 17, 18, 19, and 20 horses per race. So that gives us a total of 247 horses that we're evaluating. I feel that's an adequate number uh, to make uh, assessments. Uh, I'm not going to get into detail of how I set up my models, but in short, I'm going to ask the software programs to pick which of these factors are going to be relevant in predicting a winner and what is the weight of that particular factor uh, for the calculations. You'll see down here is my RPXL system value 
based on which factors were deemed important and the weight of those factors. Once each horse gets a number value, it's ranked on that particular race and that compared to the actual finish of the horse. Additionally, I've uh, labeled the favorites of uh, race and I define favorites by any horse whose odds were less than three to one. And there are true favorites if they finished first, second, or third, and false favorites if they finished fourth or worse. This page is uh, the basis of my model. These are all of the factors. Uh, I will let the software program decide which factors will be used or will not be used, and on top of that, which uh, weight should be assigned to that particular factor. So for example, here, Dirt record, is it going to be used, is simply a yes or a no, zero meaning no, one meaning yes. So in this particular example, the dirt record will be used, and the weight assigned to that uh, parameter is seven. Uh, obviously, there are 98 parameters that uh, the software is going to be looking at, and is going to figure out how many factors optimally should be used, and what the weights of each of those factors are. So to run, just so you may see how it works, the at risk evolver is used uh, for this particular uh, process. If I start the simulation here, it's going to take a couple of seconds to initialize. As you see, These are all of the previous winners, their morning lines. This is the RPXL system value assigned to them. This is the rank that that value brings. This is their actual finish. These are all winners. And what I also have here is the mean square error of the finish and the rank. As you see, there are multiple uh, variations performed very quickly by the software. and. This can last from a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes, sometimes I'll leave it overnight. At some point uh, it comes to a conclusion and I stop the simulation. And I always want the best value. Uh, so what the software has given me here are 10 winners, which is 77% of the winners uh, so 10 out of the 13 winners were picked uh, by implementing these factors and weights. Uh, as you see, the only horses that were not picked were Charismatic, $64. Uh, Giacomo paid $102. And Mind That Bird that paid $103. All of the other horses with this particular uh, profile uh, were picked as winners. There were 12 true favorites, 9 of which were identified correctly, and there were a total of 20 false favorites, 18 of which were identified correctly by this particular uh, profile. Now keep in mind this is just one profile. I do this 50, 100, uh, and for the Kentucky Derby a total of uh, 200 times. And if you look at uh, the final analysis here, I have a chart which indicates what were the most important uh, factors. So, for example, let's see the sum, actually let's see the time that the most frequent uh, parameters were used. And let's uh, sort them by the most times. So you see scoutability was used 82 total times followed by haul form and the bris pace line speed, bro hammer early pace and the turf record. The factor that was most important or the one that was given the most weight was workouts. So interestingly enough, for the last 13 years, the most important factor that the genetic algorithms have come up with is the actual workouts, followed by 
the Briss early pace in two out of the last three races, followed by the Briss late uh, ability in two of the last three races, and the fourth factor, Scott ability. So the weight that was assigned to these factors when they were chosen was 4.7, 4.3, 4.2, and 3.9. And finally, these are all of the profiles that I've done so far for the 2012 Kentucky Derby. As you see, I have a total of 105 profiles uh, to date. So I still have 95 more uh, to process. Once I have all of these profiles ready and the field is named for the 2012 Kentucky Derby, all I do is implement these uh, factors and weights to the horses that are going to be run in the 2012 Kentucky Derby and based on uh, 200 profiles I will have my predictions. Thank you for watching my RPXL system